So 15.4. So, um, so green, green, uh, George Green, it's named after George Green. Um, he was a, a self-taught mathematician and physicist. He learned from library books while he was working in his, uh, he worked in his father's bakery. And he was one of the first people that tried to come up with a, um, a mathematical theory for, for what they were figuring out about electromagnetism. And um, so what, what his work, so this guy that, that learned from library books, his work influenced a lot of people who were working at, on uh, electromagnetism at the time, uh, including, including Maxwell. So he was, he was really one of the pioneers of the mathematical theory of electromagnetism. So what, what we're going to do with Green's theorem, Green's theorem relates a line integral around a closed curve to the double integral over the region that that closed curve encloses. So in order to, in order to talk about Green's theorem, we need to define a few things. So Green's theorem depends on a, a simply, we, we're, we're going to talk about a simply connected region. We need to get to what we mean by a simply connected region. So the first thing we need to know is what a simple curve is. So a simple curve is a curve that um, does not intersect itself anywhere between its endpoints. So a simple curve is just going to be a <coughs> curve like so. So that would be a simple curve. So it doesn't intersect itself. So something like this would be um, not simple. Because it intersects itself right, right there. Um, a simple closed curve. intersects itself only at its endpoints. So we would have something like this. So we're going to intersect itself only as, at its endpoints. So something like something like this would not be a simple closed curve. Because it crosses over itself. And then finally, a simply connected region So these are the simple curve, simple closed curve that, those, that, that's going to refer to the boundary. A simply connected region uh, is a region where the boundary is exactly one simple closed curve. So a simply connected region would be something like that, and our region would be inside. So something that would be not simply connected would be a region that has more than one closed curve as a boundary. So this is not simply connected. So we're going to be interested in simply connected regions. Simply connected regions bounded by one simple closed curve. Um, and what we're going to do for a simple for a simple closed curve is we're going to define a positive orientation. So we said depending on how we parameterize a curve, we could we we when we when we parameterize a curve, we introduce an orientation. We're going this direction around the curve. We're going to define the positive orientation as counterclockwise. We're going to go around a simple closed curve.
So that's so when and the problems will say we're going around a simple closed curve with positive orientation. So that's what we're meaning. We're going uh, counterclockwise. And so that what what that means is as the point traces the curve, the region always stays on the left. So as we're going around the curve, the region, the, our simply connected region, is always going to be the, on the left of the on the left of the point. All right. Now we can state Green's theorem. <coughs> Green's theorem is a really nice, really nice thing. We can do lots of things with Green's theorem. Makes our lives easier in a lot of ways. So we're going to say that uh, C is a piecewise smooth, simple closed curve. And this simple closed curve, C, is going to bound a region in the plane, a region R. And we're talking about <coughs> in the plane. And we're going to say that, well, since since this is a piecewise smooth simple closed curve, region R is going to be a simply connected region. And we're going to say that our M, which is which are M and N, which are functions functions of X and Y, are continuous and have continuous first first partials. So I'm going to say in my rather than writing that all out, I'm going to say our nice function. So these are these are continuous and have continuous first partials in our region. So they're they're well behaved functions in our region. So what Green's theorem tells us is the line integral, and we get a new symbol today as well. Yes. That circle on our integral sign means we're going around a closed curve. The line integral around our closed curve C of m dx plus n dy equals the double integral over our region partial of n with respect to x minus partial of m with respect to y dA. And we can remember we can also write our line integral. This is equivalent to saying the line integral of f dot dr. These two are the same, mean the same thing. Where f is mi hat plus nj hat. So this, again, this symbol means the line integral around the closed curve, and we put the arrow telling us we're using positive orientation. So the circle means a line integral around a closed curve. And we will, soon we'll, we'll put a, a circle around our, our double integral and also circles around our triple integral. We'll talk about what that means so we get some nice new symbols. Um, so the proof, the proof of Green's theorem is, is, a, is long and a little tedious and we have to consider multiple cases so we're not going to go through the proof here. But I just want to talk about what this is telling us. So remember we, we when we first came up with the idea of a line integral, we were talking about the idea of work. And we said that the force only does work in the tangential direction, in the direction of motion. This f dot dr is, lets us, the line integral around the closed curve of f dot dr is really what we're doing is summing the tangential component of f around the bound, around this curve. And that says that the sum of that tangential component of f around the curve equals this quantity over the area. Well, what does this partial of n with respect to x minus partial of n with respect to y look familiar? What did we use this quantity for if we had a, a field, our vector field defined like this? 
test if it's conservative. So if this quantity was zero, that told us that this field was conservative. This is related to this kind of a two-dimensional version of the curl. And in fact, if we said our, if this was um, a three-dimensional vector field and we said the z component was zero, this <coughs> gives us the vertical component of the curl of this field. What this is telling us is the tangential, the sum of the tangential component of f around the boundary equals the sum of the normal component, the vertical component of the curl over the region. And we'll talk a little bit more about this. So this is related to the tangential component of f, and this is related to the curl of our vector field. So this relates the tangential component around the boundary to the curl, vertical component of the curl, over the region. And that's kind of a preview for when we get to the divergence theorem and the Stokes theorem, what, what those are going to tell us in three dimensions. So if thinking about what we just said, what if, what if this field is conservative? What, is, what do we know right away if, this, if f is conservative? About these integrals? They evaluate to zero. The line integral of a conservative field around a closed curve is zero. So that tells us that this double integral would be zero also. So right away we know if, if we have a conservative field that these integrals evaluate to zero. All right, so let's take a look. Um, let's take a look at how we're going to use a couple of examples of how we would use Green Serum, how they make our lives easier, how Green Serum makes our lives easier in a couple of different situations. Next time on Friday, we'll talk a little bit more about Green Serum because this the double integral over our region, we can manipulate Green Serum and use a line integral to find areas. And that can simplify finding difficult areas, but rather than evaluating a double integral, you can evaluate a line integral to find an area of a region. So we'll talk about that next time. So that's another. All right. So let's look at let's look at a quick example of using Green Serum. How Green Serum is going to make our lives easier in, in a lot of situations. So we want to we want to use Green Serum. So anytime we have a line integral around a, in a, a closed region, we should test to see if our field is conservative. If it's not, then we should think about using Green Serum. Can we use Green Serum? Is that going to make our, make our lives easier? All right, so we're going to use Green Serum to evaluate the line integral around this closed curve, uh, C of y minus x dx plus 2x minus y dy. So this, this looks like what was on, just on our quiz. And uh, c is uh, the boundary of the region inside y equals square root of 25 minus x squared. And outside, y equals the square root of 9 minus x squared. So before we do our, before we set this up, let's sketch this, let's sketch this region and the, our curve, our curve C. So here we are in the xy plane. y equals 25 minus x squared, what, what is that? Circle. And we, ha we just have the positive square root. So we have a circle like so. So there's one boundary of our, of our region. And so we want to be inside this circle and outside a smaller circle. So our boundary is here. And we're going in the positive orientation. So we're going counterclockwise around that curve.
So in order to evaluate this line integral, so here's our, here's our region. In order to evaluate this line integral, we would have to parameterize four different curves. We'd have to evaluate this on four different curves to evaluate this line integral over that closed, closed curve. Not necessarily difficult. The, the circles, we use polar coordinates, and then we have two straight lines, and on those lines, y equals zero. But it's a lot of work. Let's use Green's theorem. So m in this example equals y minus x, and n equals 2x minus y. dm dy, the partial of m with respect to y, equals 1. The partial of n with respect to x equals 2. So this Green theorem tells us this line integral is equivalent to evaluating the double integral over r of 2 minus 1 dA, which is the double integral over r of dA. What's the double integral of dA? What's that? So this is saying we're, we're taking the double integral over our region, and our integrand is just dA. But so, so, so if we're adding up all these little pieces of area, all we're adding up is a little dy dx's over the, over the region. What do we get? The area of the region. The double integral of dA is the area of the region. Anytime we're integrating just the double integral of dA, we're getting the area of the region. So all this, this line integral, because of the way the partial derivatives work out, all we have to do is figure out the area of the region. How do we figure out the area of this region? We could do the double integral, but what's the easy way? Geometry. It's just the area of this ring. So it's the area of half a ring. So this is going to be um, 1 half pi times 5 squared minus pi times 3 squared. And when we evaluate this, or when we calculate this out, we get 8 pi. We could do the double integral over that region using polar coordinates. R, R varies from uh, 3 to 5. Theta varies from 0 to pi. Um, and we get the same answer. But Green's theorem reduces this line integral, where we have to do four, four different line integrals to finding the area of that region. Saves us a lot of work. All right, questions there. So again, anytime we have, we're looking at a line integral around a closed curve, check to see if your field is conservative. If that's the case, then the line integral evaluates to zero. If not, use Green's theorem. Make, often, the double integral is much easier to evaluate than the line integral. All right, let's look at another example. Um, let's look at the line integral around our closed curve of uh, y squared dx plus xy dy. And c is a boundary <coughs> of the region between y equals 0 Uh, y equals square root of x and x equals 9. So we'll make our little sketch of our region. Here's y equals square root of x, y equals 0 down here, and x equals 9. So there's our region. There's our path 
going counterclockwise around our boundary. So we, in order to evaluate this line integral, we would need to parameterize three curves, do three different line integrals for this thing. We're going to use Green's theorem. So the partial of m with respect to y, here's m, is 2y. The partial of n with respect to x equals y. So Green's theorem says let's evaluate the double integral over our region of y dA. Uh, but negative y, sorry. y minus 2y is negative y. Negative y dA. <coughs> so now rather than evaluating three line integrals, we can evaluate one double integral. And we know how to do this. So we're going to evaluate set my rectangles vertical. X is going to vary from 0 to 9. Y is going to vary from 0 to square root of X. And we're going to evaluate minus Y dy dx. Nice, easy double integral. When I evaluate this with respect to y, I get a y squared over 2, and we plug in that square root, so we just end up with a y. Nice and easy to evaluate. When we evaluate this, we end up with minus 81 fourths. Easy double integral to evaluate. Much easier than doing three line integrals. So Green's theorem reduces this problem involving three line integrals to a problem involving a nice, easy double integral. So that's the other nice thing about Green's theorem is we get to start doing multiple integration things. Yes. Yay. All right, questions on that example? So line integral around a closed curve. Any line integral from now on, really. Check to see if your field is conservative. If it is, you have some easier ways to evaluate your line integral. If your field is conservative, the line integral around the closed curve is zero. If your field isn't conservative, use Green's theorem. See if evaluating that double integral over the region is going to save you some work. So let me look. Let me write one more example up here. We're not going to go all the way through this one, but I just want to give you an example. So let's say we have the problem. We're given this line integral around this closed curve of e to the x cosine 2y dx <coughs> minus 2e to the x sine 2y dy. And our curve is x squared plus y squared equals uh, and I'm just going to say a squared. Some radius. So think about how difficult this would be to evaluate directly. These integrals look really nasty. Our curve is a circle, so we're talking about polar coordinates. So we have e to the r cosine theta and, and uh, sine 2 r sine theta, cosine r, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Very difficult problem. We take the partial. So we say, okay, we have an integral around a closed curve. We think Green's theorem. Partial of m with respect to y is minus 2 e to the x sine 2y. Partial of n with respect to x minus 2 e to the x sine 2y. So what does that tell us about this integral? Equals zero. So by taking two partial derivatives, we've saved ourselves a lot of pain. So this represents a conservative field. It's integral of a co conservative field around a closed curve is, is zero. Trying to evaluate that directly is good. All right, questions on Green's theorem? 
We will talk more about Green's theorem, Green's theorem tomorrow, and we will talk about how Green's theorem is actually a special case. We'll give an introduction why Green's theorem is a special case of some other theorems we'll talk about uh, later in the in the chapter.